Strange Real History, helping fans old and new understand the in-game lore from the Ace Combat series. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Enjoy! 1981, the height of the Cold War between Osea and Yukdobania. Both superpowers are building more and more ICBMs and anti-ICBM tech in order to show off their military strength. While both nations were competing against each other, Belka noticed the increased arsenal of weapons and wondered what would happen if those ICBMs were pointed towards us. Fearing that this hypothetical scenario could become real, Belka initiated the Ballistic Missile Defense Program, which was intended to safeguard against ICBM attacks in the event of a worldwide nuclear war. Engineers across the nation came together and presented various concepts on how to take out an ICBM before it reached its target. The concept of a laser interception system, Excalibur, was eventually chosen as the best method of protection. I think this calls for a little history lesson. Excalibur was a Belkin superweapon designed to intercept and destroy ICBMs with a long-range chemical laser. This superweapon was given the name Excalibur because the main tower's broad, rectangular shape looks a lot like a sword stuck in stone. Although the blade-like tower is the most iconic feature, there is more to the structure than just the tower that holds the laser. The entire structure of Excalibur covered hundreds of acres. The center of the main installation consisted of the main tower, the tallest structure of the weapon, a square foundation with six projections, and six regulator towers. Excalibur's optical amplifier and radome were situated atop a slender aperture that extended from the top of the tower. Both sides of the tower had built-in exhaust vents that would discharge the superheated fumes being generated from the laser in order to prevent the tower from overheating. This tower stood atop the center of a square foundation. Coming out of the sides of the foundation were six projections, four primary and two secondary, that extended several hundred meters. Each of these projections supported their own variable hydraulic regulator tower, which stood several hundred meters tall. It is assumed that the regulator tower surrounding the main tower generated a repulsive electromagnetic field that would contain the accumulating energy from the base of the tower in order to prevent any unwanted discharges. Electrical energy was produced via four power generators located at the cardinal points of the structure. The weapon was also surrounded by three large solar panel arrays that served as a reserve power source in case something happens to the power generators. In order to fire the weapon, the four power generators produced high voltage currents that were fed into Excalibur's base via power conduits. The electrical charge would then accumulate and travel up the central tower. Once the charge reached the top, the weapon would then fire the laser through an optical amplifier on its radome. This laser beam was known to emit an energy output of 1.21 gigawatts and would last for approximately 7 to 9 seconds. Excalibur was able to aim the laser in almost a 360 degree range of motion. Once the laser was fired, Excalibur's emitter became locked. After the laser was fired, Excalibur's exhaust vents opened up to release the superheated fumes in order to avoid damaging the weapon's vital power systems. Once the tower was cooled off, Excalibur was ready to fire again. In order for Excalibur to successfully destroy long-range airborne targets, the weapon was assisted by an array of low-orbiting satellites equipped with reflective mirrors that redirected the laser beams. This combined method allowed Excalibur to have a maximum range of 1,200 kilometers, which is the same range as Stonehenge. Although Excalibur was a long-range weapon, the structure was surrounded by four rail-mounted RTLS weaponry for short-range defense. These were based on a network of railroads built around Excalibur's position. Each unit was armed with a laser cannon capable of 360 degree rotation. As an added measure of defense, four ECM jamming sites were built south of the main installation. Although the concept of an anti-ICBM laser system was chosen as a symbol of the nation's technological strength in 1981, Construction would begin on December 17, 1989 in the centralized region of Tauberg. 
Excalibur's engineering challenges were undertaken by the South Belka Munitions Factory. The construction crew began clearing the site of overgrowth in order to lay the concrete foundation for the tower. Once the foundation was finished, the crew started to build the cooling systems, power sources, and RTLS defense units in early 1990. By the end of October that same year, the cooling towers, RTLS, and secondary systems were completed. The crew would start building the main tower in 1991 and would finish its construction in June 1993. By August 9, 1993, Excalibur was deemed complete, including all RTLS and secondary systems. However, a team of scientists and engineers would visit the site and later confirm that Excalibur was fully functional on July 18th the following year. Excalibur was ready to defend the nation from any foreign nuclear missile attacks, but the weapon would never get the opportunity to destroy an ICBM because eight months later, Belka invaded Osea, Sapin, and its eastern neighbors on March 25th, 1995. Excalibur remained inactive during Belka's Blitz invasion and the subsequent Allied counterattack, but Excalibur would become operational after the Belkan army was pushed out of conquered territory from the Blitz invasion. The first wartime deployment of the weapon took place on May 17, 1995 during the Allies air raid on Gladestant. Excalibur successfully wiped out an Allied squadron operating within Belkan airspace. Luckily for Excalibur, the Allied forces were unaware of the attack. On May 19th, the weapon again openly attacked Allied aircraft during the Allies' offensive through the Cheyenne Plains. Excalibur shot down a convoy of Ocean transport aircraft as well as several Allied fighters. However, Excalibur's personnel were about to go on the defensive very soon. May 23rd, a flight of Allied fighters and the mercenary squadron Galm were dispatched to destroy Excalibur. Their approach was quickly detected on Vulcan radar. The personnel ordered the four jamming sites to increase their ECM output. Excalibur fired and destroyed the Allies' tanker aircraft, forcing the pilots to break formation. Excalibur needs to take out the smaller fighters before they get any closer. While Galm team destroyed the jamming sites, Excalibur fired repeatedly. Once the last jamming site was disabled, the pilots began their attack on the laser weapon itself. Excalibur was far from defenseless thanks to its four RTLS railway cannons. As soon as the Allied pilots got closer to the main installation, the RTLSs opened fire but Galm Team's flight lead, Cypher, was able to take out all of the RTLSs. Cypher then eliminated the four power generators. Excalibur's personnel consequently began pulling power from the weapon subterranean reserves in order to continue firing the main weapon. But Cypher destroyed the tower's optical projector and rendered the weapon inoperable. The Allied forces then proceeded to bombard the tower with missiles. They were going to make sure that Excalibur would never be used again. The bombardment caused the tower to tip sideways. Soon, the concentrated damage and physical stress eventually caused the King's Sword to sever in half. The Allies are victorious. The upper part of the superstructure plummeted to the ground and destroyed much of the surrounding infrastructure. The Allied forces were free to continue their march towards Dinsmark. After the war, no plans were made to try to repair or reconstruct the damaged tower. Excalibur was abandoned and the overgrowth surrounding the facility slowly reclaimed the land. There is evidence that the abandoned ruins of Excalibur still stand in Tauberg's countryside. Maybe one day, another laser interception system like Excalibur could be built in the future. But only time will tell. If you like this video of Strange Real History, please intercept and destroy the like and subscribe button if you wish to see more Strange Real History videos. As always, my name is Saluda Seversoul, and I'll see you next time. Soul out.